Timmermans. I think that really sets the scene um, for what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we're going to move on now into the first uh, panel discussion. Uh, we have a great panel which we'll bring to the stage in a few minutes. But first of all, we have an introduction to this panel. Uh, and we have the Minister of Foreign Affairs and European Affairs of Croatia, Mr. Gordon Guric Radman. Apologies if my pronunciation is not absolutely spot on. Um, and the minister, as you know, Croatia holds the, the EU presidency at the moment, so he's really the man in the hot seat of making these, uh, these negotiations, this process work, also at the member state level. So, minister, please, the floor is yours. Timmermans left the vice president, but of course uh, I'm very glad to be here again. A couple of days ago I was here, presented the Creation EU presidency priorities, and it was really a uh, good experience to be here. And I'm really uh, happy to be again, and uh, I fully agree to uh, what the vice president said. Uh, if we just not, do not uh, act and uh, nothing to undertake, uh, there's nothing to, uh, to uh, be in the happen. Uh, that means that uh, zero plus zero is always zero, but in nowadays circumstances it is even less. So just do it together. Uh, our slogan is a uh, strong Europe in a world of challenges. It's not our, only our uh, slogan, it's uh, your slogan again, uh, uh, as well, because Croatia uh, met their older uh, foreign policy goals and our we are happy to be a uh, member of the family and to preside uh, 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 the, uh, the European, uh, the Council of the European Union. It's really a uh, proud uh, for us. Probably you are the the members of the uh, older, the seniors uh, members countries, but for Croatia as a young, youngest member state, it's really a, a privilege. Um, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. It's my great pleasure to participate at this high-level conference related to one of the pillars of the new strategic agenda, the European Green Deal. This ambitious deal represents the EU's package of measures for addressing climate change. It represents the EU determination to take action and not only to take notice. Responding to climate change actively is among the most if not the most critical task of the European Union and for the other global partners. Our citizens were clear in sending this message that the European Union should lead the way. We all stand here to deliver, to deliver for them. The citizens know and we politicians know as well that the climate change puts the existence of our generation on risk and even more, the existence of the generations to come. The EU is, has committed to transform its economy and society. Protecting our natural habitat will be good for people, planet, and economy. By choosing a sustainable path set in the European Green Deal, the EU has a good chance to become the first climate-neutral continent in the world by 2050. This is, of course, not an easy task for any of us, of us. It will be challenging to embrace all the changes of the green transition, especially in making sure that nobody is left behind. This commission, led in this area by our kind host, France, who just left, has given a clear political signal that, is, that it is ready to embark on such a journey. The communication on Green Deal has been presented in the first weeks after taking office. This fact speaks for itself. The Green Deal was complemented by a recent sustainable Europe investment plan and the Just Transition Fund, which sets a framework for a very important financial component of the deal. In Croatian presidency, presidency uh, dear friends, you will have a dedicated partner on this journey. Croatia has put into lights the goals of, first, 
fighting climate change and uh, degradation of nature, as well as, secondly, conserving biodiversity and protecting seas and oceans from pollution in its presidency program. We are deeply aware of the need to achieve a more sustainable use of natural resources. The EU should grow, no doubt about that. A Europe that grows is the first, actually, the, the priority of uh, our presidency program, as you know, but in a sustainable way. And this is what the Green Deal is, in fact, our new growth strategy. The strategy that is aimed at transforming the EU into a prosperous area, we hope, whose economic and social development does not come with a price of massive carbon emissions. We see climate neutral growth as a key element for the future of Europe, Europe that is as strong as possible in an ever-changing and challenging world. The Green Deal is obviously a backbone for many discussions we will have during our presidency. The deal should set the tone of the debate in all the relevant areas for achieving climate neutral Europe by 2050. That means pretty much every area. Our common intention is to make Europe a leader in the global fight against climate change. For this purpose, all our policies have to be aligned. What will this transition bring? A climate-friendly industries and the clean technologies, an effective circular economy, green, green and healthier, healthier agriculture, properly functioning energy market that provides sustainable and secure energy, affordable to our citizens, pollution-free environment, meaning cleaner air, soil and water, sustainable transport, and finally, more re resilient ecosystems. The role of technology in that sense is especially important. Many of conventional approaches will not be enough anymore. We will have to invest in research and innovation. This will also mean new jobs, in new areas. Also our creation citizens will be happy about it, such as a smart mobility, batteries, circulars, circular sectors, and many other. The European Council of last December gave us, the Council, a clear assignment to take war with the Green Deal forward. The endorsement of the 2050 climate neutrality objective requires, dear friends, overcoming serious challenges. And yes, many have expressed doubts regarding this transition and the way it is going to affect the most vulnerable among us. We cannot ignore different national circumstances. We are all aware of that. Not every member state starts at the same position nor has the same capacity to respond. That is why we need to act as one, together, with the Commission, not, and not leaving any member state behind. Our aim is to bring together the EU citizens in their diversity, to work alone with their governments if we want that this ambitious deal becomes reality. Croatian presidency has recognized, recognized the horizontal scope of the Green Deal. It will be discussed in several council formations, formations, understanding the positive effects of green transition on each policy area is of utmost importance for us. Adriatic Sea, for example, it's not only Croatian Sea, it's also your sea, sea European Sea, we are very happy to see all oh, the tourists coming uh, from all the countries of the European Union, because Adriatic Sea, it's also your sea. And just uh, let's go and to protect the sea, to be nice, clear water, in any sense. 
Friends, what worries citizens and governments the most when it comes to such fundamental change as the green transition is the finance. Transforming EU's economy for a sustainable future does, does come with a cost, of course. Just a few weeks after the Green Deal communication, the Commission has presented the financial plan for its support. Its plan to mobilize 1 trillion euro for sustainable investment by 2030. The EU budget should reflect the new EU strategy, EU strategy of green transformation with a share of climate related purposes, purposes higher than ever, ever before, 25%. We will also use the Invest EU program and work with the EIB. And there is the important instrument that should ensure that the regions most affected by the transition do not stay behind, the just transition mechanism. This all assures us that EU's political commitment to a broad green transition comes with a strong and, and sound financial basis. It shows EU determination to ensure support for those most exposed in this transition. Our immediate action is needed now. I believe that we all, the Commission, the Parliament, the Council, have the same goal, to achieve full agreement on the climate objectives among all member states. And Croatia, it tends to work hard in this sense, like in basketball, like in football. We are, or we are aware of the importance of the climate law that will be published by the Commission by March. This law we in, will enshrine the goal of climate neutrality by 2050, and we stand ready to take work forward and to advance as much as possible by June. The transition proposed in the Green Deal will not happen in a vacuum. We are part of a global effort to tackle, tackle climate change as set by the Paris Agreement. Increased efforts by other global players are more than critical for addressing this issue in a holistic way. Croatian Presidency will therefore do its best to ensure that we submit the EU's long-term strategy on greenhouse gas emissions to the United Nations Framework Convention as soon as possible, ahead of the COP26 uh, meeting in Glasgow. This step will be a signal that the uh, EU is ready to lead the way. Ladies and gentlemen, the transition to climate neutrality within Europe will have to be supported by our work in external dimension. Having global partners on board with us requires integrated uh, climate action in outreach towards third countries in the view that this could generate more climate ambition at global level. I am therefore glad that the last FAC Council I attended, I attended at the Council, has provided us with a new framework for climate diplomacy. We need to take a tailor-made approach in order to help a number of countries build resilience and adapt uh, to new realities. We should do this while respecting and taking into account their vulnerable, vulnerabilities and the specific situation. For, for many of them, the peace of green transition will depend on preserving political and econ economic stability. We also support green transition in EU's immediate neighborhood, to the south, to the east, and in the Western Balkans. It's our immediate neighborhood. Our example will be crucial if the EU shows willingness to react and to ad and adapt our policy quickly having our global partners, partner countries and our neighbors on board should make that task much easier. I thank you for the opportunity, Anna, to be here with you today and share some of my thoughts on this topic. And I hope you will have a fruitful discussion today that will set a solid basis for a common goal of becoming first climate neutral continent 
in the world. Thank you very much. <clears throat>